Hi there, this is Hans Forschner with Navcon Engineering Network. The graphic user interface in Soundplan version 9 GeoDatabase has significantly changed and added new features. This video highlights the use of the mouse, which is an integral tool to enter and modify information in the GeoDatabase. Mastering the mouse control can save a lot of time, as a lot of the menu selections and features are available on your fingertips. As you watch the video, I do recommend taking small breaks and to try out the things that are new or different to previous software versions. Getting hands-on experience is important as some of the functions require a combination of right or left mouse button or mouse wheel or the mouse interaction with the keyboard keys such as Shift, Control, Alt, C and Spacebar. Uh, from personal experience, it takes some practice to create the brain muscle memory. As you use the functions more and more, the model data entry becomes automatic and developing and modifying a model will become very efficient. This video will go over the various mouse controls, the construction and digitizing, selecting and modifying objects. Before I get started, a shout out to Florian at Soundplan for providing materials for this video. Thank you, Florian. Let's get started. So the first uh, function I want to discuss is the mouse wheel and how that uh, changes or how that allows you to change um, zoom functions. So as you move the cursor here, um, right here, uh, you can use the mouse wheel and if you push the mouse wheel you can uh, panhandle the viewport. All right. If you um, push the mouse wheel forward, you zoom in, mouse wheel backwards, you zoom out. If you hold the control button and use the mouse wheel, you rotate the geometry in five degree elements or five degree uh, changes. So here you can kind of see uh, what you're looking at in terms of like the overview here on the right on the left hand side so this is our viewport that we currently have all right so you can zoom in and zoom out and you can rotate and again the rotation is with the control uh, button on your keyboard pushed and using your mouse wheel all right then if you go to an object, uh, let's actually let me reset the whole thing. And there's a couple of resets here. So here in the top right toolbar, that's sometimes semi-transparent. So here we have 100%. And then here we have also a north arrow. The north arrow will basically adjust the angles back to zero. And then the 100% basically readjust to kind of show the total project area that is loaded at this point. So we have beside the 100%, which is the, again the resell, reset to total view, we also have these arrows up here. And the arrows are either clockwise or counterclockwise. So here is the left uh, rotation or the right rotation. The same as the wheel uh, forward and backwards, you can also use right here the plus and minus for increasing or zooming in or decreasing zooming out so again plus zooms in minus zooms out all right now uh, lastly here we have a couple of arrows here these arrows will shift the viewport by half of the uh, view area either to the left or to the right or up or down. Now here we also have a zoom mode where we change from the uh, crosshair cursor to a magnifying cursor which is basically the zoom mode. Here we have a couple of functions with the left and right mouse. Uh, with the left mouse we zoom in wherever that magnifying glass is. So if I put it on the bridge and I zoom in, then it zooms in at this bridge. Uh, if I use the right mouse, it zooms out from that bridge out. You can also zoom into an area by holding down the left mouse. Uh, you start with the left mouse, 
pushing down and keeping the left mouse pushed and drawing open this box. So if I open up the box to this area, the program will zoom into that area. Again, we can go back to reset uh, with this 100%. Now, another option that we have here, if you hit the Alt key and go to any objects, you can see that there is like a OBJ right under the magnifying glass and that will uh, allow us to jump to this object. In this case it's a building so it jumps right to that building. I go to this building jumps right to this building. All right. All right. Then finally I just a few uh, other things in terms of uh, viewport control we have up here under the background and viewports total view and here we can save right here we can add viewports so right now we have uh, a data entry that we'll use in a second data entry building one so we'll uh, digitize and bu uh, the building here and data entering building two we we'll digitize this building here in a second so these and then we have again total view so these are different viewports that we can save again with this icon right here. We can save the viewports, we can add, uh, we can rename and also delete viewports. And then here we can also show the viewports general. So here we can see where the viewports are. So if I turn the background off, so there's a viewport right here, a viewport right here. So that is the uh, show viewports right here. So now we are discussing the next input, uh, the next use of the mouse, and that will be the left mouse with various variations. So let me turn on the aerial view here. And so here we have uh, buildings uh, that were imported. We have uh, some road or freeway right here. And uh, what I like to do is I like to show uh, the, the left mouse freehand digitizing so here I'll uh, select a road input and uh, it doesn't really matter what the traffic is at this point just we are focusing on the digitizing so I'll start here on this uh, point uh, we have a digital ground model selected so it will automatically know the elevation we can see that down uh, down here uh, in this corner the XY so wherever we are we get the elevation so I'll get my first point and uh, so it has the elevation I'll uh, click on the check mark and then you can of course just digitize to the next point and as we digitize you can kind of see that the program will show you the distance from the last position so if you have any uh, specific thoughts of the spacing that you want to uh, digitize uh, you can go, let's say we want to digitize every uh, 100 feet. So you could go like somewhere around in this area and you could push uh, or just digitize the next point. All right. Then I go to the next point and next point and so on. If you want to have something specifically at a certain distance, we can move into the, the construction mode. So if, if you hit the C button here, the program will allow you to say okay what is the length of the next section with the mouse we can change uh, with the mouse going a uh, mouse wheel going down we can change the, the space uh, the distance or we can override it so let's say 30.48 that's exactly 100 feet and here we can also change the angle so from the last point we want to go directly west so maybe zero uh, actually east and so this will be exactly 100 feet going east and we go to the next point and this will be 60.96 and again zero degree and so in that case we could actually specifically define where the points are located so let me continue and here you can see we're starting to digitize a lot of points um, and here I want to show you that you can also uh, move your mouse to the to the to the direction you want to digitize and you can use the spacebar on your keyboard 
to digitize. So I, I'm just pushing the spacebar whenever I'm ready to digitize and the program just digitizes the point. And it can go fairly quick then. All right. And here I'll end, end the input. All right. So if we want to digitize a building, a rectangular building in this case, let me zoom into this uh, building one. That's this area right here. So again, with the free input of uh, or digitizing, we can just click on the uh, building right here and start digitizing at any corner. We can start at any corner. So let me start on this one. And typically you want to digitize on the longest facade. So I'll start on this one here. I'll uh, make it a 20 meter building. And we go to this point, this point. And on the fourth point, I'll double click and it closes the building. So this is my first input freehand uh, input of the building. Now we can also, let me uh, just move this. I select this building holding down my right mouse while getting to the selection later. Uh, but for right now, I'm just moving this over here and I show a second input. So as you can see up here in the construction, uh, if I put in a building or any area object, it op automatically opens up, up, allows me to open up a rectangle for the digitizing. Now in this case, one big change here, typically it was always left to bottom right, top left to bottom right. In version nine, it doesn't really matter. So you can start at any, uh, at any corner. Let's say I can start at this corner and drag an, a window open from bottom left to top right and release that will open up the construction tool for the rectangle and just like with the line we can change the width and the length and the angle right okay so that is uh, the same building now all right so i can uh, take that out move that over here uh, next option that i want to show is the angle mode so the angle mode is kind of interesting because um, it allows us to digitize with a pre-default angle uh, increment. And so let me uh, digitize my first point and cl click on the check mark and let me turn this off. And just to see, uh, you can see the, the distance and you can see that the second coordinate basically jumps and it jumps in 15 degree increments. So this is a uh, default digitizing setting that it always will uh, go with 15 degree increments or default angles. All right. Of course, in this case, we don't really want that. So let me go to the first point. I go to this corner and in this case, it's it's right on, but if we want to overwrite that, we can hold the control button and it uses whatever point we have there and it overwrites the default 15 degree input. So I, after I digitize my second point, and right now, because it's the angle mode, it, it basically allows me to go in uh, 15 degree angles. So this is 90 degree, this is 105 degree, 120 degree, 135 degree, 140 degree to the last coordinate. All right, so I want the 90 degrees. So I click right here. And because it's a rectangle, we can just double click here and it completes the input. All right, so we digitize three points. Everything is 90 degrees and uh, it's finished. Now we can use this angle mode also for buildings that are not always uh, has right angles. So let me go to this building number two. So we have right angles uh, in several places, but a number of places there is no right angles. So let me get started uh, right, uh, right here. First point, this is 10 meter in, or 12 meter in height. We go to the next point. I overwrite that. 
uh, I click on on this point digitize so I have the shift button uh, pressed I go to the next point again it's not in 15 degree angles next one I do uh, click on that and the next one I go all the way down here again still the shift button uh, pressed and now the next angle will be a 90 degree angle so I release the shift so now it digitizes in 90 degrees up to here and then from here on I want to overwrite it again and I close right here so this is where you can actively turn on and turn off uh, the right angle mode or the 15 degree angle by holding down the control button on your keyboard and digitizing with the left mouse. Now if we have uh, a building here and we want to uh, open up any of the buildings here with the left mouse you, you'll see that it doesn't matter if you go to the coordinate or in this case on the line uh, of the facade it will open up the building properties so I just went to the facade left click opens up the building properties I go to the corner the crosser changes to an arrow and we can open up the building properties same for the line uh, sources like in this case road I go to the, uh, the line it changes to an arrow if I go to that coordinate yeah it opens up alright now that is of course a problem if you want to digitize directly on the facade for example so what do you do so if you uh, want to snap a coordinate to an existing building here for example we uh, push the control button and if you look at the uh, this view here uh, the crosshair changes into a crosshair with uh, so here it changes to an arrow and if I have the control button uh, pressed it changes into a crosshair with a little circle in it so that will snap a coordinate onto the facade right so I'll select that left mouse button and it digitized the point on the facade of this existing building I can do that on the second point right here and then again uh, 90 degrees and we have a uh, building attached to an existing building the same you can do with uh, point sources line sources area sources you can snap them to a building all right so we can also snap uh, uh, objects like say if we want to add a snap a road to an existing road so we can uh, click on the road icon and we snap it to this road so the next road section starts at this point and then we can continue digitizing for example into this direction we can also snap to a building so let's say if that's a, a garage and uh, the traffic goes into that building we can again snap it to that building and end the input now sometimes you want to have a building and uh, an object and you want to digitize on top of the object so of course if we move the cursor over the the building it changes to an arrow because it thinks we want to edit the building now in this case we don't want to snap it to the building we want to put it on top of the building so let me just check on this building so this is 18 meters high all right so what we can do is we can uh, use the Z key on on uh, on your keyboard and you can see that my my uh, cursor if I hit the Z it changes and it allows me to digitize over a existing object right so if I wanted to digitize right here now the building oh this is now road sorry so if I want to digitize another building right here I digitize it maybe starting right here All 
right? And now in this case, I'll put the building 18 meters above the ground. So now we have uh, two buildings on top of each other. So let me show that in the 3D view. Let me show that in the 3D view. So here we have two buildings on top of each other. All right. Now, other things we can do here in terms of the left mouse, we can add coordinates uh, on an existing line or area object by uh, holding the shift button. So if we go to a uh, line source, I click the shift button, it will just add a point right here, add multiple points. So wherever we go, click on it, the program will interpolate additional points right there. And then of course we can move those points um, however we want. All right. Now we can also delete the points with the same shift button. We hit, uh, press the shift button and move the cursor on the coordinate that we want to remove. And now we get a minus sign. Same works for buildings. So shift. So we want to uh, kind of subdivide a facade in multiple uh, sections. We can do that. So in the next section, I'd like to talk about the right mouse and then also in some cases a combination right and left mouse. So here um, we have the right mouse. Again, uh, you have the crosshair uh, as we move the mouse uh, on your viewport. And um, let me turn off the background here so it's easier to see. So if we hold down the right mouse um, and pull a uh, rectangle over an area, so like this here, any object that is inside this rectangle, uh, where at least one of the coordinates is inside that rectangle, rectangle gets selected. So in this case here, the line source right here, uh, or this road, and all these buildings get selected. If we um, do the same thing from, not from left to bottom right, uh, we started on the bottom right and then just do a, a small rectangle going to the left up. We des deselect. So again, we can select by holding the, the right mouse, opening it op uh, open that rectangle from top left to bottom right. Everything inside that rectangle, any coordinate, any object inside that gets selected. Now we can also select uh, by if we just hit the, the right mouse button where there's nothing in close by. So we hit the right mouse button and we get a selection of different options. And one of them is the all object selected, all object deselected. And then of course for the objects that are currently selected, we can assign them into a different geofile or layer, or we can convert them from uh, into a different object type. So we could uh, define, for example, all these lines and these areas, and we could convert them into generic lines or generic areas. All right. Um, so here I'll do the deselect, and again, right click all objects, and that would select all of them. All right, deselect and select them all. Now, when we have objects selected, then um, let me select some more here. And so I'm selecting additional here uh, manually by holding down the control button. So that adds more uh, objects into the selection. And you can kind of see there is a little purple diamond and the purple diamond is always in the geometric center of all the selected objects. So here we have a combination of the right mouse to select and now the left mouse where we can uh, grab that purple diamond and just move things around, right? So we push the, 
the left mouse and on the purple diamond and move around these objects All right then if we hold down the control button we can rotate those objects so let me just uh, do that here again I'll uh, put those back to where they were okay maybe something like here and uh, so now I'll uh, do um, a uh, uh, shift maybe a first of all let's duplicate that and there's another function with the alt key and the left bounce I can duplicate anything that is currently selected so let me uh, push the alt button and then drag all these objects down here and I'll move this whole thing up and now we can hold the control button and we can rotate alright so this is kind of how you can easily duplicate objects select them duplicate rotate them or shift them alright so let me duplicate that again duplicate that again now any of these objects uh, are basically just copied and pasted so the names didn't change any of the properties didn't change so everything stays the same so let me continue with the right mouse and uh, what happens if we uh, click on the right mouse on uh, any objects so first of all the right mouse will only function if you go to a coordinate of an object if it's a building only on the coordinates of the building the uh, right mouse will change it will not change in terms of the functions if I use the right mouse here on the coordinate I get this selection of different uh, yeah, functions or edit functions to change this building so we can activate the object which means that we can continue digitizing splitting objects that's for lines selecting objects is clear changing entry directions that's for line objects like barriers roads berms uh, line sources you may change the, the direction uh, you digitize in one way but then you run, want to reverse the input we can also delete the objects and then here we have like a single duplicate of the object so here if I do a, dig, a duplicate so here I can just duplicate this one building for example right um, there's also create parallel object that could be interesting for roads again berms or any type of line objects where you have a parallel objects next to it and you can space that with a certain distance copy properties is an interesting uh, uh, function to copy the properties of the existing selected object and apply that to another building in this case if you have uh, roads uh, you could apply the traffic or you can apply uh, the uh, speed or any of the other properties to another road in this case for buildings uh, there's of course building properties that you can assign from one building to another capture coordinates is of course uh, we capture this specific coordinate and we could digitize another building select and then of course insert and all that and then change geofiles etc so these are all the functions in terms of the right mouse on an object so a lot of these functions you can also find up here under the start ribbon so here we have of course the select objects so you have a selection of different ways of selecting uh, that we talked about earlier and then here we have also the selection of a lot of the editing functions in terms of changing geofiles duplicating uh, doing coordinate operations and all that So I think that uh, ends my um, discussion on uh, the mouse control in the uh, GeoDatabase. Thank you for listening and um, please check my uh, script in the uh, video description. If you want to jump to certain sections, I will have uh, the different controls uh, shown there and so in the video uh, minutes so you can jump to certain uh, like sections of the video if you want to review that thank you for listening have a great day after recording was completed I recognized that I missed a few smaller topics one in the situation manager there is a 
settings for settings option and here we see in terms of using the left and right mouse there is a search radius that's uh, set up in terms of pixels so five pixels and the angle steps so the angle steps again is uh, when you use the angle input for lines or areas uh, that it goes in 15 degree angle steps uh, then also zoom uh, to bitmap uh, viewport so if you're selecting a viewport uh, that has a different uh, or bitmap that has a different viewport it automatically would zoom to a hundred percent of that new viewport so that's uh, this check mark right here I typically have it unchecked but uh, you may want to play around with that all right then in the situation uh, manager uh, so let me open up the situation and here I also want to go over in the miscellaneous uh, settings there we have the capture mode settings so if you capture a coordinate from another object you can have the program automatically, automatically always uh, select or, or use the Z coordinate or you can uh, also ignore the Z coordinate or you have a, um, a prompt coming up where you can either take over or select the C coordinate or you decline it so that's these uh, inputs that we have right here so here we can select if you want to have the dialog always on the first point or on the point uh, when you close the line input or close the uh, building input or any area uh, object input or that you uh, go to the uh, dialog for every single point then here we have the zoom mode to bitmap uh, viewport uh, that's again to uh, turn that on so as soon as you select the different bitmap it uh, zooms automatically to 100 percent of that bitmap then here we have the zoom box the zoom box basically uh, turns on or turns off uh, so if you have an aerial photo and it's fairly uh, uh, coarse you can have it jump and zoom some more into the bitmap before you digitize so there the digitizing typically uses two clicks to actually do the entering of a coordinate right crosshair is uh, another option here that basically gives you a crosshair that extends to the edges of your viewport um, sometimes easier to see things I typically have that turned off and then the disable of colors that turns on or off the uh, the shading of objects now that's uh, I think the end of uh, the video thank you for listening